aware that uh, zero is India's contribution, and that's a very important one. But most of the public is not aware of what exactly that means. What does that mean that India contributed zero, and what does it mean uh, that it's an important discovery, and how exactly did it happen in India? I want to tell you a little bit about that story, uh, because it's quite incredible, and I think it really shows the power of multidisciplinary thinking. It also shows the power of understanding ancient Indian knowledge, just ancient Indian knowledge, understanding history of how knowledge came about. Uh, and it's a nice story because it did actually happen in India before it spread throughout the world. So how did zero, how did the concept of zero start? It actually started in ancient Indian philosophy. The first place where we see the notion of zero is in ancient Indian philosophy. Uh, when the ancient texts, the Upanishads, and a lot of ancient Buddhist texts talked about the power of meditation, what was the goal of meditation? The goal of meditation was to achieve the state of shunyata, zero-ness. The goal was to empty the mind of emotions, of feelings, of ego, of thoughts, uh, so that one attained a certain uh, mind-body connection. That was the goal of meditation. And that's where the word shunya was originally first used. Shunyata, the state of zero-ness, what we're trying to achieve in meditation. And that goes back thousands of years. And that's where the notion of zero first really comes up uh, in world literature. So there's sort of landmarks in the development of zero. First was the concept of zero, which came in ancient Indian philosophy, as I said, uh, achieving zero-ness through meditation. And the next big landmark was then taking that concept of zero and writing it as a symbol so that we have a symbol of zero. And the first place that the symbol of zero was written down was actually in works in linguistic. So Parnini, who wrote one of the greatest grammatical works uh, in history that really laid the foundations for modern uh, linguistics, Parnini wrote down a symbol for the empty syllable, a syllable where you don't say anything. And Parnini considered that equal to any other letter. But it was just the void, emptiness. And Mainini had a symbol for that called Avagraha. It looks like an S called the Lopa. And in Mainini's sutras, there are actually rules for manipulating syllables, including the empty syllable, which had its own symbol called the Lopa or the Avagraha. And so that was the first zero. It was a linguistic zero, a zero of speech, a zero of uh, language. And that's the first time that the zero came up as a written symbol and it came up in linguistics. And from linguistics, it moved on to poetry. When poets wrote poetry, if they needed an empty symbol in their rhythm, they used that symbol of zero, the S symbol of the Avagraha. And, and then similarly now in music, when we notate music, if we have a rest in when we're playing music, we use that symbol that Bainani introduced called the Lopa, the Avagraha. And so from philosophy, the zero as a concept moved to zero as a symbol in poetry and linguistics. And so this is all before zero came into mathematics, but this was in the air in Indian philosophy and linguistics and poetry, the idea of zero. And it was only in about the year then 300 that mathematicians started to think, oh, well, we should also have a symbol for nothingness. And already we see in a, a manuscript known as the Bakshali Manuscript, the first time that we see the Indian numerals as we write them today, zero and one through nine, appearing just as we use them today, in the year about 300 in the Bakshali Manuscript. And around that time, because the zero was in the air in literature and philosophy, uh, zero as a number became adopted in the Indian subcontinent uh, very quickly, uh, even in the public consciousness. So, for example, there's this uh, great novel written in the 4th century uh, called Vasavdatta, written by Subandhu, uh, which is full of similes and metaphors about various objects that come across in the human experience. And there's one scene where they're looking up at the night sky, and at that time the zero the mathematical zero, when we, they wrote the numbers zero through nine, zero was written as a dot. It wasn't written as a circle, it was written as a dot. 
because zero was still just a placeholder. It wasn't considered a number in its own right. And so it was written just as a dot. And so in Vasavdatta, when they're looking at the night sky, uh, it's described as zero dots scattered across the sky. <laughs> and this is, this is a novel meant for the general public. And yet in it is, is, is being written, people are seeing mathematics in the sky, zero dots scattered across the sky. Uh, so already in the public consciousness, people are starting to use the numbers zero through nine to write numbers in around the year 400. Uh, but it wasn't until Aryabhata in around the year 499 where Aryabhata started to do computations with the numbers zero through nine. All the astronomical calculations were simplified by using the numbers zero through nine to write all numerals in the way that we now learn to compute with them today. Uh, so by around 499, with Aryabhata's work, uh, the numbers were now being used for computation, uh, including the number zero. But still, zero was not considered a number on its own. It was just a placeholder that we need to write the numerals uh, that, uh, in the Indian number system. But it was with the work of Brahmagupta in the year 628, where zero was written about as if it's just a number like any other. To Brahmagupta, it was very important that zero be appreciated, not just a placeholder, but as a number in itself. And so Brahmagupta writes these elaborate rules about zero plus any number is that number itself. Zero times any number is zero. All the arithmetic operations that we now do with numbers, he explained, you can do with zero as well. Zero is a number like any other. And that's where in human history, is with Brahmagupta that zero became a number just like any other number, not just a placeholder, but a number in its own right. That's the year 628 uh, in India. <laughs>